What is your thoughts to this team now, the growth of some of the young players? What stands out right now, being that there's about 10 games into the season? Well, I think you really can't compare it to the 90s Rangers. Um, you can compare in the Rangers of those years had some homegrown players in Richter and Leach. But a lot of those guys in the 94 team, you know, Neil Smith, you know, loved to trade. Like every, you know, if he didn't make a trade that week, you know, something was weird. So that 94 team was constructed with a lot of spare parts and a, a lot of different guys. Um, and really, after the 94 team, the Rangers has continued to do that, sign over price free agents, and they never really had a farm system that they can rely on. So I think the biggest change, you know, after the 2005 lockout, um, that's when they kind of, like the whole organization kind of took a, a step back. They started getting rid of, uh, they were able to buy out a lot of got these contracts because of lockout. And um, that's when it started to turn around for them with the homegrown talent. And you kind of look back to that 2015 cup run team and, and you see a lot of homegrown players like McDonough step on, um, you know, Lundquist obviously was there forever. Uh, but I, I would compare them more to the early 2010s or late 2000, you know, 2008 is really when it started to turn around from the prospect standpoint, when you look back at those teams. But I mean, if you're a Ranger fan, you can't not be happy about the quote unquote rebuild that's going on. I mean, the way that the rookies or second year players have played, I think is, is really encouraging, but I also think Ranger fans had really high expectations coming into this year um, just because of the year we had last year. And I mean, you gotta remember we, you kind of snuck into the playoff bubble. We weren't, an actual, we weren't in an eight seed. We snuck into the playoff bubble. It kind of got our, our butt handed to us there by Carolina in three games, but you know, there Boy, was an experience <laughs> level. <laughs> there was an experience level that they, they gained from that, which I think was valuable, but uh, you know, it is still, we're still in a rebuild. So when some Ranger fans kind of freak out now and, and Ranger fans on Twitter are very tough, you know, when the Rangers lose, uh, I mean, yeah, you can get upset. I get frustrated too sometimes, but uh, you got to remember that there's a lot of young kids on that team. It's going to be a lot, a lot more growing to do for this this group. So one of those young players that Errol and I both surprised are, is, is up this year is Keandre Miller, mm -hmm. who we thought might have been two years away. Mm -hmm. And he's been up this year. And outside of the, the Islander game, the first one of the season where ever, nobody played well in that game, he's really played well in every other game so far. So what have you seen from him, like skill-wise the most, numbers-wise the most from him? And he's, he's, he exceeded your expectations. Yeah, I wrote a preseason blog just hoping he made the team. Um, you just from watching him with the U.S. junior team, uh, you, already, you knew he was going to be a good player, but I think he exceeded everyone's expectations, the coaching staffs, the fans, probably his own um, from his play. Like you said, the first game of the year, he kind of looked lost, and the, the coaches even said afterwards, you know, game got a little too fast for him. He just didn't look comfortable. And then the second game he started, he looked a little better. But the last – Really, the last five games since they got to Pittsburgh, the first game against Pittsburgh, uh, he played well. He played really well against Crosby. And I think that first game against Pittsburgh, he kind of gave him the confidence um, that, hey, I, I can play in this league. Um, you know, since that he's first, I think, yeah, since that game, uh, the last five games, he's averaging over 20 minutes in ice time. So, I mean, for a rookie defenseman, that's pretty substantial time. Uh, he's on the ice. Last minute of games, he's playing overtime shifts when they blow leads in the third period, when they got to go to overtime. Uh, he's he's getting the OT shifts. You know, he leads the team right now on plus and minus at plus seven. I think the next guy's like plus three, so it's not even close to where he's at. So um, he just looks so much more comfortable back there. His defensive game is better than I thought it was going to be. Uh, I know his offensive game, you know, he's got four points already, which is great, but you know, for a, a guy that size, you want to make sure he can play in the defensive zone and, and be physical. And, and he's definitely showed that he's not afraid to go in front of the net and move someone out. So, yeah, I mean, he's had, unfortunately, some some things said about him in the media this week because of the uh, Tony D'Angelo scenario. That doesn't seem to be true. Just a lot of rumors around him. Um, but, you know, it's I think he's had a great open to the season. And hopefully, I mean, every game he gets better. So, you know, there's there's some talk about, him now creeping up with the Calder 
Trophy uh, voting now. I so. think you guys are on drugs. If you think he's going <laughs> to win the Calder Trophy, <laughs> he's having a good season. There, there's no question. I I've been surprised with him, but for a Calder Trophy, he's not even. He's not. A I'm top. not saying it. He's Go not, on Twitter. Go I on Twitter. I, I, listen, uh, Ranger I've fans. I've never are, seen a Ranger with more Ranger fan, fan accounts. Ranger fans. Ranger season, fans season. are on drugs. Okay, that's Ranger fans speaking. It's not anybody else speaking, but Ranger fans it, as. A, as a as an analyst and, and as somebody that watches hockey just as much as I watch any sport, I think uh, uh, Miller has played uh, very well, very good for the first ten games of the season. It's still very very early in the season. How many goals does he have? He doesn't. He, what does he have one goal. Only one. No, okay, one goal. he's yeah. got one goal. You you're going to talk about him being a Calder Trophy winner? I mean, come he's on, a defenseman. He's not. Uh, a... Well, but uh, defensemen have to score goals. They got to they got to do other things too besides play defense. I mean, I could say the same thing about Noah Dobson. Noah Dobson has three goals so far this season. He's a Calder Trophy uh, candidate. Come on, I mean, seriously, you can't put somebody as a Calder Trophy candidate just because. I'm not saying he's going to be up there. I'm saying I, that's I, the I, buzz I, you I, get I'm for saying, Ranger fans I, on Twitter. They're excited uh, about this guy. Well, you know, Ranger fans are excited about everything. They're probably uh, excited about the dirty underwear that landed on the ice when uh, somebody scored a hat trick because it gives them good luck. I, I have no idea. Some of the Ranger fans that I've seen over the years, uh, and I'm not saying you, but Ranger fans are out of their damn minds. I, I, they're just crazy. As you guys know, we are talking to the host of Broadway Hats podcast, Kyle Hall. And by the way, Kyle, I am not a Ranger hater like everybody. I don't like the Rangers. Oh, really? <laughs> but I don't hate them, okay? Everybody thinks that I hate them. But I'll be honest with you. I, I think Miller has been he's, – he definitely is standing out right now. But, I, again, I'm going to say this, and I'll say it over and over again. I think they should have traded Lafreniere. Uh, they, it, it, getting that number one pick, I would have I traded that number one pick and got myself a top-end number one style defenseman because that's where they're lacking at the position, and, and maybe get themselves a sixth or a seventh pick uh, in the draft, and they still would have gotten a quality player. And, and we don't know what Alexis Lafreniere is. And so far he's, what, one goal? I think he's got a goal. Yep. Overtime winner yeah. last week. That's I, right. I, I mean, he hasn't really done anything. So I, I know he's young, and I, only, I know he's only 18 years old. But again, uh, to me, it's alarming when you have so much offense, and those offensive players, when it comes down to the playoffs, they don't show up. Yeah, I think the thing with Lafreniere is he got off to a really slow start, and, and he even said himself after the first goal that he was – pressing mm-hmm. and i think as a first overall pick that happened obviously that happens of course. i think you have to come in and want to produce right away for your team and i did not like his game last game i thought you know he only played nine minutes i think it was like the least second least on the team uh even with brendan smith getting hurt so you kind of see him falling out of order a little bit with the coaching staff. His numbers, his ice Quinn's has been a moron. Going down the last three games. Quinn's a moron, first of all. He, well, yeah, he's, 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 you cannot you cannot put your number one tra- top draft pick all the way, push him all the way down to nine minutes when this kid needs to create some confidence. And now all of a sudden, because he's not playing well or he's pressing, you're going to put him in for nine minutes. Have you ever seen Barry Trotz do that? Never. No, it, it's something that. Quinn's done the last couple of years too. And unfortunately, Vigneault did it as well when he was the coach. For whatever reason, Ranger coaches decide that they're going to take these prospects. And I've talked to a lot of Ranger prospects about this too, you know, young guys about it, that they say the same thing about certain guys. Like, why didn't this guy make it? Why, you know, well, when they come up, you know, Elias Anderson, I, you know, I was talking to a guy about Elias Anderson. He's like, you know, when he was in Hartford, he was the best player on the ice, you know, best playing the first line in practice. He was the best guy in practice. He go up to the Rangers. He's playing fourth line. So who is he passing the puck to? No one. You know, who is he creating with? No one. Tanner so guys. how do you get a good sense of this player if he's not playing with the top echelon talent? If he's not on a first or second line. But with Lafreniere, they kind of gave him a chance to play with Zibanejad and Kreider on the first line. And he didn't really produce at all with them. I was excited when that happened. I thought that would get maybe that line going because the two of them were struggling as well. Kreider's come on lately, but Zibanejad has been awful this year. Mm. You know, he is not been the same player well, as he's he had, been the last he had COVID-19 first of all and he yeah missed... but he's, he's saying that's not the excuse though uh, but that's abs- absolutely first of all he lost about 13 pounds okay? yeah and he just looks he just looks 
Dra- he's dragging during the games. You can see it. It has to be the and I, and, and this is coming from an Islander fan that's not a Ranger fan. I, I will tell you, Zabitajad lost 13, 14 pounds ever since he got COVID-19. He missed OTAs. He missed practices. Well, I call it OTAs, but uh, preseason practices yeah. and, pre- and, 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 and I guess uh, pickup games or whatever they got ready for the play. I mean, in the regular season. Uh, so uh, you can see the difference that he's pressing. But Zabitajad, out of all the guys that really stands out to me, even Panarin, Zabitajad will figure things out. He, this is a guy that's high flying. He could do everything on the ice. He can hit you. He, he, he sticks up for his his players. To me, he's the best player on the Rangers. There, there's not even a question. I, I know a lot of people love Panarin for what he did last year, and he's a sensational goal scorer. But all around games, I'm taking Zabitajet over Panarin. No, I think you're 100% correct. I think when, and I actually wrote this in the preseason, my preseason uh, post about it too, the Rangers go as the Zabitajet goes. When he came, when he was red hot last year, the Rangers were red hot, you know. It, and now with Philip Hedl out for the next month, you know they're really lacking center depth, and and Zibanejad really has to step up because Ryan Strom has been up and down this year too. Uh, your your former Islander boy. I I don't. Um, I never liked Ryan Strom. So first, you know, I I, I was happy they didn't give him a long term deal. You know, they gave him kind of a bridge deal, but. Uh, he has he's been playing better the last couple of games, but he had a really slow start to the season. But if Zabanja doesn't figure it out quickly, the Rangers could be in trouble here. So speaking of center depth, you were actually mentioning to me a couple uh, when I was setting up for the interview that the Rangers and Derek Stepan possibly is a reuniting a rumor that's happening. So tell the fans about that and what it would take in order for them to do that. Yeah, so it's actually something I floated on my last episode of my podcast so we're kind of going over some options for who the rangers can pick up as a center um and it seems like tony d'angelo's agent has come out and said that there are multiple teams now floating around the rangers wanting to get d'angelo dealt he stinks um, and the rangers take him what? he stinks they yeah i don't care that someone anyone could take him but apparently a team i saw a couple things earlier today that um a team that might be interested is ottawa because they're looking to offload salary. And for the Rangers to make this work, they'd have to probably take some salary back. And uh, Derek Stepan's making $6.5 million in Ottawa. Ottawa does not want to pay him $6.5 million. You know, he is not the same player he was. But he's only 30 years old. So it's not like he's really at the end of his career. Like, he has a couple of good years left. Uh, he's not obviously the same player as he was when he left the Rangers. But, I mean, to fill in as a third, second-line center, I mean, you can do worse. He's in the last year of his contract, so you kind of give him a, a show. You know, it's kind of a, a show me year for him anyway. Mm-hmm. And now, Frank, the Rangers could use some veteran leadership right now, anyway, in the locker room. As you guys know, we are talking to the host of Broadway Hats podcast on Belly Up Sports, Kyle Hall. Kyle, before we let you go, okay? And I, I know a lot of people. I know a lot of people uh, have this Ranger Islander. You know, what, what's the word, Speed? Rivalry. Not rivalry. I, I, hatred, okay? As as a Ranger fan, do you hate the Islanders? And if you do... No, uh, no so you don't hate the Islanders. I don't hate the Islanders. I think the reason, and you're going to hate my reasoning behind it. I, I want to hear this. Go ahead. Growing up, the Islanders were never a problem for the Rangers when I was when I was growing up watching the Rangers. It, I mean, the Ranger, the Islanders were you know going through a rebuild, and they had... You know, the fish sticks days when they didn't have an owner and, you know, fake owners. They always played else. well. They always played well against the Rangers. Always. Even yeah, when they were there. I was never worried. I, I'm more of a – I more hated the, the Devils than anything. I hated Brodeur. Um, that was more of a rivalry in my mind um, for Greatest the Greatest goaltender area. ever. Greatest goaltender ever. I hope you were leading some Marty chants. Heck like that. <laughs> <laughs> How could you hate Martin Brodeur? I mean, now you, you can't Very easily. Him. Well, I mean, because he, he plays your team every time. That's why you hate him. Right? Yeah, yeah. But now that he's retired, you can't hate the guy. I mean, the guy's one of the great. Oh, you got to get an opportunity. Him. Yeah. You have to respect that he was a great goalie, but you can still not like him. I, you know, I, how I many mean, Islander fans hate Lundqvist? Uh, I don't hate Henrik Lundqvist. A matter of fact, I, I speak very highly of Henrik Lundqvist. I think Henrik Lundqvist is one of the greatest goaltenders of this era. I, I, I don't think if if you look at Henrik Lundqvist and what he did in this era and, and the goaltenders in the 90s, I don't think he comes even close with, with the Dominic Kashyks, the, the Eddie Belfours, the, even the, the Mike Richters and John Van Beesbrooks and the Tom Barrasso's. I mean, th- those goaltenders in that goaltending time uh, was the greatest time for goaltending. I mean, now you look at you know guys like Henrik Lundqvist. Who was as good as Henrik Lundqvist in this time, in this era? Uh, 
I don't know. I, I, I mean, I, uh, it's definitely not any of the Islander goaltenders, that's for sure. I think he's judging more fan hate versus analytic hate, though. Yeah. Ah. I, I don't think fans hate Henrik Lundqvist, even Islander fans. Because why, why would the Islander fans hate Henrik Lundqvist? He's not putting the puck in the net. He's stopping the puck. And, and as an Islander fan, I, I, always look, I always look at great goaltending. If, if you're a great goalie and you're stopping uh, our great offensive players, well, then we got to find better offensive players. I mean, seriously. So I, goaltending is, is the hardest position in professional sports. I don't care what anybody says. Try to get a 100 mile per hour, 110 mile per hour slap shit coming at you uh, and, and, and coming in all different directions with a man standing in front of you. you tell me if you can stop too, it yeah. and, and try to stop it, okay? I mean, it's not easy. 